I often get asked the question, what is the right setup for planetary observations? This is why in today's video we are going to take a deeper look at what equipment is needed in order to maximize the views of the planets. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's get this video started. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to VD Observatory. Let's start by looking at telescopes. While all telescope types are great for observing planets, there are a couple of options that, when taken into consideration, can offer some advantages. Since the planets of our solar system are much closer to us compared to deep sky objects, they appear bright in the night sky. This is why a telescope with a very large aperture isn't that necessary here. More important is the focal length of the telescope. So why is that? Well, you see, the longer the focal length of a telescope is, the higher the resulting focal ratio usually becomes. If the telescope's focal ratio is greater than 8, then we call this a slow telescope. Using the same eyepiece on a slow telescope allows for higher magnifications than with a faster one. The formula for magnification being the focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length of the eyepiece in millimeters. This is why slower telescopes help achieve higher magnifications much more easily than faster ones. Another thing to take into consideration is that telescopes with a long focal length also have a narrower field of view. While this might pose a problem for wider targets like deep sky objects, it isn't a problem for planetary observations since planets appear small in the field of view anyway. Besides the focal length, the quality of the optics is also very important. That is why refractors with high quality lenses and obstruction-free optical tubes can offer very sharp and contrast-rich views with little to no aberrations. Here apochromatic refractor telescopes lead the way for refractors when it comes to image quality. But arguably the best tool for observing planets are maxutov cassegrain telescopes. Their compact size, even longer focal length and high quality corrector lenses can offer exceptionally sharp, contrast rich and aberration free views whilst being more affordable than premium apochromatic telescopes when you compare telescopes with the same aperture. Here I can recommend the SkyMax series from Skywatcher and I encourage you to check out my full review of the 4 inch version of this telescope. I will leave a link in the description below. Next, let's talk about the mount of the telescope. Since planetary observations require higher magnifications with maybe the exception when observing the moon, having a very steady mount for the telescope is essential. This is because every time you touch the telescope to adjust the focus or the mount to slightly adjust the orientation to keep the planet centered, you inevitably introduce vibrations which spoil the view through the eyepiece. And the mount that has the capability to suppress such vibrations and allow them to die down quickly is going to be great for planetary observations. The mount should also be steady and not wobble when under higher loads. Another way to eliminate vibrations altogether is by opting for a go-to mount that requires little to no manual input from the user. A go-to mount will also allow you to keep the target centered for a much longer amount of time without the need for manual corrections. This is especially useful at high magnifications because the higher the magnification is, the narrower the actual field of view is going to be, meaning that Earth's rotation will be much more perceptible. This basically means that at high magnifications, you will have difficulties keeping the object you are observing centered if you are using a manual control mount. So if the mount can do that automatically for you, then that is a big plus. Here the Wi-Fi enabled go-to mount 
AZ GTI from Skywatcher would be a great choice for telescopes below 5 kg. Next on the list are eyepieces. As we established earlier, planets appear small in the field of view even at high magnification levels. This means that a wide apparent field of view and off-axis image corrections aren't that important as sharpness, contrast and brightness. Depending on the focal length of the telescope, eyepieces with focal lengths between 3 and 11 mm are well suited for this type of observations. Also, pay attention to the eye relief of the eyepiece. So, in general, shorter focal length eyepieces, like the ones used for high power observations, tend to have a shorter eye relief. Here, a value above 15 mm is desirable, especially if you wear glasses like myself. Also, you want eyepieces with fully multi-coated lenses to reduce unwanted light scattering and other aberrations. Also, the amount of lenses inside an eyepiece is partially responsible for the eyepiece's ability to offer a certain level of brightness. This is because typically the more lenses an eyepiece has, the dimmer the image can be. This is not always the case, but if you can, then look for eyepieces with fewer lenses. For planetary observations, I really like the 52 degree series from Explore Scientific and the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium. Both offer great optics for a reasonable price. But if money is no issue, then you might want to take a look at the Delight series from Teleview, as it's regarded as being one of the best eyepiece lineups out there for planetary observations. The next item that can be very helpful when observing planets is the bellow lens. They work by increasing the focal length of the telescope by the magnification value of the Berlow. So a 2x Berlow lens will effectively double the focal length of the telescope. I personally like my eyepieces to have a longer focal length and then pair them with a quality 2x Berlow. This way I have two magnification options per eyepiece. For example, I really enjoy observing with 7 and 9 mm eyepieces, which I can use alone on nights with poor seeing conditions or in combination with a 2x bellow for double the magnifications on nights where the seeing conditions are great. Since using a bellow also means adding extra lenses to the whole optical system, look for a good bellow with quality but few lenses inside, such as the Focal Extender series from Explore Scientific or the Bellow lens series from Teleview. Also, since we are talking here about planetary observations, the eyepieces that are relevant should all come with a one and a quarter inch barrel size. That is why a one and a quarter inch bellow will be perfectly enough. You don't necessarily need two inch bellows if you are only interested in planetary observations. In terms of magnification, a 2x and maybe in some extreme cases a 3x bellow lens is going to be enough for visual observations. Anything higher will result in a magnification that is way too high to be usable. If you are a bit more advanced, then you also might consider filters as ways to improve your planetary observations. They work by blocking a certain wavelength of light whilst letting others pass through. This can boost contrast, remove glare or unwanted light reflections and help reveal subtle details that wouldn't otherwise be visible. For brighter objects like the Moon and Jupiter, polarizing filters can improve the views by reducing the overall brightness and thus allowing your eye to spot finer details. Here I enjoy using the variable polarizing filter from Omegon very much. Another popular filter type for planetary observations are color filters. They work by blocking specific wavelengths of light, enabling you to see planets with less color information but with better contrast. For example, using a light blue filter on Jupiter will better bring out the reds in the planet's cloud bands. You can also combine two filters by simply stacking them before attaching them to the eyepiece. 
This way, you can create combinations that can better fit a specific observing situation. In the case of color filters, it's best to just get a set since these aren't that expensive and you can try out for yourself to see which ones and which combinations you like the most. These color filters also have a standardized labeling system called the Rutten number system. For example, the light blue filter for observing Jupiter that I was mentioning before has the Rutten number of 80A. I will leave a link in the description below to a nice overview of the Rutten number system. The ultimate equipment piece for planetary observations is perhaps the Bino Viewer. It works by splitting the light captured by the telescope into two separate beams. These are then directed to two separate and ideally identical eyepieces. This means that a bino will allow its user to observe with both eyes instead of only one, thus allowing for a significantly better viewing experience. Not only that the eyes can focus better, but the perceived brightness and contrast is also much better. And then there is the fact that when using both eyes, the strain on them is considerably lower, allowing for longer and more comfortable viewing experiences. The major downside, however, of a bino viewer is the cost it involves. Not only that the device is expensive, but you also need two identical eyepieces instead of only one. And depending on how many eyepieces you are planning to use with a bino, this can get expensive very fast. But if money isn't an issue, a bino viewer is going to make more of a difference than almost any eyepiece you could get. So this was an overview for astronomy equipment that I believe can have a significant impact on planetary observations. This list certainly isn't complete and I'm sure you can think of other items that might be beneficial for this purpose. So it should be viewed as a starting point for when you're building your setup for planetary observations. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.